Hello and welcome to the Ingerati studio live at European Utility Week. Uh, my name is Sofia and today I'm joined by Elena Teschner. She's a senior expert in politics and market at the German Energy Storage Association. How are you, Elena? Fine, thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Thank you for taking the time, of course. So, Elena, let's start. Um, can you please tell us a little bit about uh, the activity at the BBES and your role there? Of course. Um, well, our association is uh, basically the voice of the whole storage branch. We are representing all storage technologies. Our members are representing the whole value chain. So we have uh, research and development, for instance. Of course, we have uh, the industry itself. Um, we have the storage operators, but as well some members of the cloud around the field of operation, like lawyers and banks and insurance companies and consultants. And um, yeah, my role in this association, um, my fields are politics and markets, so I'm basically involved in all regulatory and legal matters, and as well the interconnection of all global storage markets. Um, yeah, with our members and for our members. Can you tell us what the current uh, situ uh, situation of energy stores in Germany? Yeah, like only a couple of years ago, the, the public picture of storage was always, um, well, the energy transition does not have to wait for energy storage. And all those uh, discussions were always about uh, as whether we need the grid or storage. Mm -hmm. And the answer to that is definitely um, that we need both. You know, like we need the grid, there's absolutely no doubt and no question about it. But uh, yeah, the grid can only do one thing. It can bring the energy or the electricity to, to one point to another. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's, it's a one trick pony, you know. And on the other side, energy storage serves in so many different applications with so many different tools. It's more like a Swiss army knife. Mm -hmm. And um, well, it provides so many um, good services, good for the system, and uh, all this in a very cost-effective and efficient manner. So um, last year, in 2015, the, the cost for redispatch we have in Germany was exploding. It all, almost scratched the, the range of one billion already. Wow. You know, we have a lot of wind in northern Germany and um, a lot of industry mostly in southern Germany. Mm -hmm. So the most logical idea is, of course, to bring the wind from north to south. But the grid is not apt yet to, to get that. That's why we have the, those high redispatch costs. Okay. And um, so the public opinion from before um, that the energy transition does not have to wait for storage changed towards that the energy transition um, cannot afford to wait for the grid. We definitely need other flexibility options to um, lower the cost because, yeah, that's just too high, you know, those redispatch costs are only one component that gets turned over on the electricity price so of course everybody notes that um, yeah well and so lately um, as I say as I said the public uh, picture changed drastically and there are a lot of business models evolving and um, yeah coming up and uh, yeah already came up in the last uh, year can you tell us which are the most common technologies and business models in the storage of course well, of course, um, there is a whole bundle of technologies and business models. Um, starting with pumped hydro, for instance, mm -hmm. it has been integrated in our system successfully for the last decades. It's like the backbone of our system stability and it's very crucial for, for our security of supply. Um, battery storage, for instance, is well in the current center of attention because it serves in so many different applications. Um, it reacts within milliseconds and is perfect to deliver primary reserve control in large applications, but as well in small applications or residential applications for the optimization of self-consumption. Um, mixed models are a very strong trend in Germany. That means like for instance in, in quarter storage projects or swarms, like mm -hmm. bundled household storage. Um, yeah, that like the, the, the combination of different applications, like the provision of control energy or like one part of the battery capacity is used as well for the optimization of self-consumption. Then um, arbitrage businesses, you know, for the storage operator, this is great because uh, as we know, the more income streams you have, the faster the whole system gets closer to economic viability and, and pays off. 
And as well, um, another fact of mixed business models I definitely want to underline is um, that they are very um, grid supportive. They are very friendly to the grid, you know, because for the grid operator, everything gets more controllable mm -hmm. once you bundle all those different um, storage capacities. So, and then uh, we have power to X technologies. Okay. You know, um, that's, uh, yeah, they facilitate um, the shifting of excess electricity to other sectors, like to other energy forms, like gas, for instance, with uh, power to gas, or heat um, with power to heat. And um, shifting excess electricity to other sectors, um, this electricity or this energy can, saved for, uh, can be saved for days, months, and, and so on. So this is a huge point to augment the whole efficiency of the system and as well um, helping to decarbonize other sectors. Having the, the goals of the Paris Agreement in mind, um, we definitely have to think cross-sectoral in order to reach them. You know, if we only focused on the electricity sector in Germany, um, having in mind those goals, uh, we would have to have 65% of renewables in our system by 2025. So um, this is all but impossible to reach. So as we see, we have um, a lot of different or very interesting technologies and business models and mixed business models um, that are yeah, win-win for a lot of participants. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, um, the regulatory framework is uh, not apt at the moment or cannot cope with all those recent developments. But um, yeah, there are definitely, yeah, the, the, the base is laid and we are all um, ready to get into the market. Okay, brilliant. What are the regulatory barriers that energy storage is confronted with and uh, how can we do to adjust? Well, um, first thing is, um, so far, neither on a European nor a German level, there exists a definition of energy storage. Mm -hmm. This turns out to be a serious disadvantage for energy storage in many applications because mostly it's assigned to the, to the role of consumption, which means that um, parts of the final consumption fees apply for every kilowatt hour that gets stored. Okay. Um, for power to X technologies, uh, the situation is even a little bit more tense because once no reconversion to electricity takes place, the full range of final consumption fees apply. So um, we're facing here a very absurd situation because A, those fees that are charged, uh, they're charged twice because they, they apply again or they get imposed again once the same kilowatt hour is reaching the final consumer, you know? And B, um, Another absurd context is that those charges even apply when the um, storage entity is acting in a very grid supportive way. Mm -hmm. You know, so there is not only no reward for uh, reactivity, but we could say it's sort of a punishment because all those fees apply. Um, what we definitely need um, to clarify is the definition of energy storage um, as a fourth column of the energy system, um, apart uh, from the generation, the transport, mm -hmm. and the consumption, because as we know, storage is storage. Yeah, well, so maybe to wrap this point up, we see that uh, flexibility is definitely the key uh, to our future energy system. And um, of course, energy storage is an ideal tool. It's an ideal flexibility option that serves in so many different applications. And um, yeah, so it definitely should not be hindered, but encouraged. And we need a real level playing field. Um, so what we need is a, a definition of energy storage to clarify the situation of fees and charges. Mm -hmm. And as well, a transparent pre-qualification -pre process, which is open to all technologies in the same way and is transparent and uh, yeah, reliable for our investment. Okay, thank you very much, Elena, for taking the time to speak to us and to the audience. Thank you very much for tuning in. If you missed something or would like to hear more about relevant content on energy, feel free to check out our Indirati YouTube channel.